Artificial intelligence breakthroughs in brain imaging are opening up a whole new world of possibilities. From visualizing orgasms to detecting opioid addictions. And maybe even the first steps towards true telepathy. But let's start with some scientists that have successfully implemented artificial intelligence to map the human orgasm. So yeah, the brain waves become very uniquely patterned in the brain during this moment of pleasure. <laughs> and that can be translated to visuals in the same way that your text can be translated into text to image prompts, so they went ahead and did that. Now the scientists said they were motivated by the idea of depicting something that's commonly experienced but never visualized. I want you to think back to the best orgasm you ever had in your life. <laughs> so these images that you're looking of right now are representative of real people's orgasms. But it's important to remember that these are not just like an artist interpretation, they're actually a transformation from the pattern to image. So in the similar way that a diffusion model can take a text prompt and turn it into a similar image, that's what's going on here, but instead of the text prompt, it's the brainwave patterns. So even though they're not definitive, they give you a really interesting intuition for just how unique and different orgasms are for each person. The scientists originally thought that the images might look more similar than they actually do, so you can see the variation there is something that you know we haven't ever seen visually before so as you can see some range from mushroom like to onion like in appearance and they represent both genders so 10 people were selected for this study five men five women and these generated image show the male orgasm in dark purple and the female orgasm in bright pink which just reinforces the idea that every orgasm is like a snowflake individual in its own way now of course if ai is getting good enough to read the brainwave patterns to find pleasure there's plenty more things that we can use that kind of technology for. And one of the new use cases that might have the biggest impact that I can imagine would be using it to predict opioid addiction. And that's exactly what these scientists did. So using similar technology, but taking it in a different direction this time, scientists are able to look into the brains of different people and make predictions about who's the most susceptible to abusing opioids. Artificial intelligence is now being explored by public health officials and biomedical engineers to help detect misinformation about about opioid treatments, including wearable devices capable of auto-administering overdose reverse agents and tools for identifying dangerous drug contaminants. Now, of course, this can be super helpful for people who have lost control over their own mind and body. But on the flip side, studying the brain, using facial recognition, looking at devices on the body to figure out what it is that you're susceptible to might lead us to discriminate against people, especially those that are intoxicated. In fact, there's actually some really interesting precedent that was set by Uber of all companies in a about 2008, they actually attempted to patent a technology that would be facial recognition and it would look at the driver or the passenger in the car and make a determination if they were drunk or not. This was a big legal can of worms and needless to say, they don't have that. But still, my personal point of view is when it comes to opioids, we can maybe take this technology a little further than almost any other vertical because we know if we don't do something, how much damage is being done. Of course, only if the individuals consent to it and they want to get better. Looking at the brain to see if it's been affected in that way, tweaking the brain to make it addicted to something that somebody's profiting on each time. But this opioid epidemic is two decades old now and we're not making progress. And it's because of the complexities. We can't understand the brain very well until now. AI just happens to be uniquely suited to understand those kind of complexities in the brain and what small tweaks make somebody addicted and not. So just remember, in the US every year, we can lose over 100,000 people to drug overdoses and 75% of those are opioids. And they range from the prescription medications like Vicodin and Percocet to the more illicit drugs like the ones I don't want to say on YouTube. Now let's shift gears over to autism because artificial intelligence is helping us learn a lot about the way that the brain's constructed in somebody who's autistic. So there's a research team that used a bunch of MRIs, scans of the brain, to train a machine learning model on data from 500 individuals, 240 of whom had been diagnosed with autism. And the goal was to teach the machine learning algorithm so if it looks at a brain scan, can it go in reverse and detect if somebody has autism or not? And this quantitative diagnostic method actually worked really well. In fact, 95% of the time, it can start with a brain scan and accurately determine if the person has autism. And that's really powerful. Actually, autism has been extremely hard to diagnose. There's no blood test for it, and there's no way except the intricate details of how the brain is constructed to know. And we haven't had technology to see that. This research is illuminating how the autistic brain is different. And yet it's another example of how machine learning and artificial intelligence can translate how the brain works to things that 
matter to us. Now let's talk about what artificial intelligence is actually learning about what happens to our brain when a song gets stuck in our head. This happens to me so much, I can't believe it. Just being at a restaurant or something, I'll hear a song, I'll come home, try to go to bed, and I'll just hear that song for hours, sometimes still in the morning. Don't even get me started on this Star Trek musical I just listened to. That has been in my head for days. But luckily for me, maybe you too, artificial intelligence is giving us a hint as to what is happening inside the brain when music gets stuck on a loop. Some neuroscientists played the song from Pink Floyd, The Wall, to patients who are undergoing open brain surgery. Okay, so everything we've talked about so far has been electrodes outside of the skull, measuring electricity without the invasiveness. But this was an open brain surgery so they could get right on top of the brain. And that gives you a much cleaner signal, a more accurate signal for training a machine learning model. Okay, so they've got the music playing in through the ear and they're recording the brain's response to different musical aspects like tone, rhythm, harmony, and lyrics. And the goal is to reproduce what the patient is hearing afterwards. So by training an AI on these kind of brain recordings and what sort of music that correlates to, they were able to reconstruct the rhythms of the Pink Floyd song. and kind of the lyrics. They were very muddy and a bit inaccurate, but they were kind of there. They were better than nothing. It was not random. And this marks the first time that any kind of AI system has ever gone from the brain signals to a song recording. It also is illuminating a lot about the kind of musical rhythm that is important in understanding speech and other important aspects of speaking and music like rhythm, stress, accents, intonation, and something known as porosity. Porosity is interesting because it's what you would connect the meaning to speech to. Like a certain song might be catchy, but it might not have meaning, but the word turtle has meaning to you because you imagine the meaning of the actual animal that you've seen in the world. So porosity is how the brain is extending beyond the words, beyond the pattern. And it's also a step forward for a future where we have non-invasive techniques for actually reading this stuff out of the brain. Also a little side note fact, they think they've identified a special region of the brain that has never been known before that actually works for rhyme detection. And they confirmed that the right hemisphere of the brain is more musically inclined than the left. So you can see this kind of research is already paving the way to understand what the heck is going on when a song is stuck in your head and you're trying to sleep. All right, so now let's put it all together. Let's talk about how possible it is, where we're at with the technology right now, to read the signals of the brain and reconstruct the entire thing. Like, basically a movie screen that can play exactly what somebody's thinking. Researchers in Singapore have unveiled a groundbreaking mind-reading AI technology. It is named the Mini DVIZ, and it is kind of capable, I'm gonna say kind of, I'll talk about why in a minute, of translating the brain pattern into video. So the study involved capturing brain scans from 58 participants, as they viewed up to 5,000 different images inside of an MRI machine that was scanning their brain the whole time. Then the AI compared the brain scans to the actual pictures, so it was starting to get a baseline of what the brain looks like when it's thinking about these objects, which ended up producing an overall really interesting artificial intelligence model that can be used to basically translate back and forth. And it kind of works. It's fuzzy sometimes, it's wrong sometimes, but it does better than you would think. There is something going on and it does make me think, wow, we're taking a step down a future where this is gonna be totally possible. Now they did an interview with one of the participants who expressed a lot of optimism about the technology, saying that he's exciting about the innovative brain decoding technique and can imagine how in the future that maybe we can translate these kind of brain images directly into robotic arms and legs, giving people with disabilities the power to move again. Maybe even just crazy augmented stuff that you would see in superhero movies, you know, like Iron Man stuff. And although he's not wrong about some of these awesome potential benefits, the article didn't, you know, spend too much time noticing that there's also a lot of downsides about having your brain completely being read by anybody who's within the vicinity. That you want to make a financial decision and they're reading your brain. If you want to place a bet, they know how you're going to place the bet. If you think negative thoughts about somebody, they're going to just know that. At least I'm safe inside my mind. At least I'm safe inside my mind. If somebody asks you about your political affiliation or your opinion of someone and you don't even have to open your mouth and they've got their answer. Despite the promising results, 
These researchers say that we're still several years away from this thing actually working in any kind of real capacity. Hopefully put a lot more security and privacy around it before it ever becomes something we use day to day. But the point is artificial intelligence is becoming a mind reader and we're doing all sorts of amazing things and building amazing tools because these patterns are patterns that can be translated. And as AI ventures into this uncharted territory, let's all be aware of the pros and cons along the way. Because this current mind reading that I talked about in this video is clearly the very tip of the iceberg. In the near future, we might have true telepathy. Like Elon Musk says, the long game with Neuralink, we're going to be connected directly to the cloud, directly to other people, and maybe controlling mech warriors and cars and vehicles and all these maybe drones with like our hands and our eyes and our brain, just like their limbs are part of our bodies. That's crazy. This is some real cyborg stuff we're stepping into. And it seems like impossibly far away for most people, but the more you think about it, it's kind of close. Take off your clothes. And if you enjoyed this content, I would love it if you would smash that subscribe button.